Hello and welcome back to Harrow Road. It's only been a week and we're on another video. I didn't think I'll be doing another video before Christmas. Um, welcome back to the railway room, the loft and the layout. Um, the reason why I'm back in the loft within a week is if you remember rightly at the end of the last video I said if you see anything in the boxes or in the drawers um, that you would like me to weather then I'll do it. Um, I was contacted by a gentleman called Brian Hensby. Now Brian noticed that I had a Backman 66614 which is this one here. It's named Poppy. Um, the loco itself is named Poppy because of the 100th anniversary of the Battle of the Somme and World War I. But it also means something to Brian and his wife because they had a dog called Poppy. Now Poppy sadly passed away last year and Brian sent me a lovely message basically saying could you do a weathering tutorial, detailing etc on your 66614 Poppy because it would give us lovely memories of our dog Poppy. So what we're going to be doing uh, in this video is I'll be doing a video tutorial on detailing and weathering and then we'll have some shots of uh, Poppy running up and down the, the layout on Harold Road. But before we do Poppy, um, thanks ever so much to all those who enjoyed the last video. It's had over 2,000 views. Now I don't normally get that many views but a lot of you are obviously enjoying my comedic style of narration and uh, I've got quite a few messages from you saying you just love the fact that I just mess around and I'm not too serious and I just like do a humorous video narration. Thank you for that. Um, I will be doing more of that but obviously with this video we're going to be a bit more serious obviously because of the subject matter uh, being poppy. So without further ado we're going to get this out of the box um, and then we'll start with doing some detailing and then we'll do a bit of weathering and hopefully we'll get this done and uh, we'll have some shots on the layout of Poppy running up and down at Harold Road. So stay tuned and let's get on with 66614 Poppy. Right, so I hope you can see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to get myself comfortable. So here is 66614 Poppy in this box. Um, we're just going to get it out. I have test run it. So it does run. It runs sweet as here we go the previous owner has already fitted the uh, poppy plates to it so but unfortunately one of them's a little bit on the on the on the wonk so i think i'm going to have to uh, remove that and um reposition it so let's get that on side there first just remove all the all the packaging so what we're going to do first, we're going to do, as we've done before, we're going to do a pin wash. Now the pin wash is matte black mixed with white spirit, that's enamel paint by the way. And I've already mixed it up. I'm just going to get my special brush out, which is a MIG ammo brush. And we'll do a quick let's do a quick panel panel line wash just change the glasses for something slightly stronger right so what we're going to do is take the mixture which is here and then we're going to, just going to stick it into these recessed panel lines it's going to actually yeah going to go in there like so make sure the consistent and literally all i'm doing is just going in any recessed panel lines and because the paint is thinned it will just go into any recessed panel line and stay there so I'm just making my way across the entire model literally just dabbing it on letting, letting the paint flow into all the recessed panel lines there's quite a few on a class 66 just dabbing it on there's these engines and doors here they're all Give you a good coating. Literally just letting the paint flow down any recessed panel lines. It's pretty quite easy. It's a bit mucky to start with, and you're probably thinking to yourself, you know, what am I doing? But it all works out in the end. 
I'm just make my way up to the other end, anywhere around the doors, around the door handles. Just come over these, there, there, and there, and then on the roof, just pop it down like so. Hopefully, you can still see it. Here's my mixture, just going to go into any, there we go. Paint just flows. People use this kind of thing in um, aircraft modelling as well. It's just basically just panel line wash. And the paint will just flow wherever. And all we'll do when we've finished is um, we will just wipe away. So I'll just go there and there. It's as simple as that. And I'll just do the same with the other side. Spin that round, pop that like so. You probably can't really see what I'm doing here, but literally placing the paint into all these recessed panel lines, including where the handrails go. I've got this one here, and that one down there, and we've got this room door to say when you start doing this you're probably thinking to yourself what am I doing but it does work out in the end nearly all the recessed panel lines done now. I'm just going to go over the top of these doors. Across here, there. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we're going to let that dry just for a second, let that dry off a little bit, and then what we'll do is we'll get some cotton buds and some or lint-free cloth, and we'll just tidy up these areas where these panel lines are. Um, and that'll be done, and that will enhance any you know, recessed panel lines. So while we're waiting for this panel lines to like dry before we wipe it off, I just removed the wonky poppy nameplate dedication plaque at the bottom. Uh, the previous owner had um, fitted it on the wonk. Unfortunately, that same person had used super glue. Now I don't normally use super glue to affix these plates, any nameplates to be honest with you. Um, it just ruins your paintwork uh, also the bottom it's tiny it's a tiny little tiny little thing I think you can hardly see it um, it hadn't been cut properly so the frets were still on it so I'm just using a nail uh, a file and I'm just going to tidy this up before I refit it uh, I can't really clean the area up where the super glue is there's a uh, stuff does just ruin um, model railway locomotive um, paint jobs so I've just cleaned that up got the frets off it and I'm just going to reattach it using a, prit, uh, a blob of prit stick that's going to be the easiest way to do that and I'll show you um, uh, when I've refitted it again right so stage one is done we've done a panel line wash you can clearly see where I've added uh, matte black paint thinned with white spirit 50-50 dabbed it into the recessed panel lines and let it flow and then just literally wiped away with a lint-free cloth. The poppy name plates, I didn't fit these, this is a previous owner. This bottom one, um, I'm not happy with it to be honest with you. Um, it was fitted by the previous owner using super glue. Now I never use super glue. It's always like a Pritt stick or something like that. But you can clearly see I've I've refitted the nameplate correctly. It was on the huh, slightly on an angle. I put that back, but the nameplates um, are fitted. And as you can see, where I've done the panel line wash, you can see where the dirt is ingrained into it. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to detail it, and uh, that means putting the deflectors on the front couplings and the air pipes. So that's the next thing we're going to do. So. Phase one is over with, that's the panel line wash done, uh, and let's move on. 
Okay, so I fitted a deflector on one end. I'm going to leave a tension lock on the other so this can haul trains around. Um, we're going to detail the front end, uh, which means I'm going to have to fit uh, three link coupling and brake pipes. Now, Backman's uh, accessory packs aren't the best in the world. Uh, they come with ribbed pipes. Now, Class 66's air brakes pipes are not ribbed. They are normal, just normal non-ribbed pipes so I've been raiding the spares box and we'll be fitting some Hornby pipes on one end along with the three link coupling so I'm just going to remove this oh focus I'm just going to remove this dummy coupling here and then I'll fit uh, the three link shackle and the main resin brake pipe on one end okay so obviously using an Archimedes drill which is one of these things a little springy drill I've made my hole slightly larger and that is a Hornby R7200 three link coupling and a brake and main res pipe from um, my spares box uh, to be honest with you any any pipes that you fit are better than the ones that Backman supply you um, West Hill Wagon Works I think do a, a vast selection of different air pipes for different classes and might be worth giving them a shout but if you have got a Backman Class 66, don't use the ones they supply because they're just they're not the right ones. So we fitted the pipes and the shackle. It's on to a bit more weathering now. Okay, so I'm going to airbrush weather the underframe. I've got some matte black as a first base coat. I like to work at an angle. I don't like to airbrush on the uh, turntable. I like to do it literally at an angle on my workbench. So I've masked off the wheels. Just going to give it a quick clean and then we'll give a couple of passes with the airbrush using matte black so effectively what we're doing here is just toning down these boogies so they're more matte and that'll give us our base coat so i'm just going to go across give another couple of passes and once that's dry we'll just tidy up the boogies uh, the bearings and the steps so you can see that's toned it down lovely on the underframe as your base coat. Right, so using a cotton bud dipped in some trusty white spirit, we're just going to clean up certain areas like the steps where drivers will be going in and out. Just going to clean these roller bearings up slightly. Let's get rid of the overspray. Sorry about the camera work. <laughs> I'm actually holding the camera plus doing this at the same time, so it's a little bit patchy. And again, this is very hard to do this whilst holding a camera in the hand <laughs> so there you go that's that tidied up uh, and then we'll mix up some matte black and some matte leather enamel and we'll go over the underframe again and just tone that down slightly so I mixed up some matte black matte leather and made a where is it um, made some track dirt and I've gone over the black base coat which we've done so there's no two layers on there now you've got your matte black then the track dirt colour which is matte black matte leather together and as you can see it gives it that track dirt kind of uh, appearance right so the under frames are all done in track dirt we're turning our attention to the roof now but this exhaust silencer is totally the wrong colour so I'm going to mix up some rust colour and then just do the exhaust silencer so I've got some Revel Matte 84, which is the closest thing I can get to a kind of exhaust. Silencer colour, and I've just gone over that. Rather than being grey, it's now that nice kind of rusty exhaust silencer look. So that's uh, our exhaust base coat. So we'll sort that out in a little while. We're just going to turn our attention back to the underframe again. And we're just going to do a pass of tractor on the lower balance the body side 
Right, so there we have it. We've just sprayed a little bit down the underside. I've cleaned up around the doors where the drivers have been in and out, where they open the handle up. It's coming on a treat now. I've also just sprayed the front with a bit of track dirt and just masked off the whole area there and just gave that little bit of a, a blasting with the old track dirt as well. We're now going to turn our attention to the roof and then we're nearly done. So yeah, looking good. Okay, so I've done the roof, all around the silencer, all around to the front end where they normally get all their dirt deposits from the exhaust. And we're just finishing off by doing the drag method. Now that is where we airbrushed up to here. We're just causing a streak effect. Now you can either use a cotton bud or you can use a lint-free cloth. And all you're doing is just wiping away to cause streakage. There we go, streakage. Good little tip that. So we're nearly done on this now. Uh, we're just finishing off. And uh, hopefully you've found this tutorial easy to follow. Um, we'll get Poppy on the layout in a moment and just take a couple of videos and that'll be about it. So there you go. Poppy 66614 completed. Right, before we stick it on the layout, there's one final look at it. I forgot to say I did mask off these um, these grills and just went over them with a bit of track dirt as well. Um, I could go a bit further with the roof, but for this video we're going to leave it as it is. There you go, it's a good view of it. Using the techniques we've used, you can see the streak to a good effect. Um, I will come back and just finish the roof with a bit of roof dirt, but for this video you can kind of see where what we've been up to and what we've done. So there you go, 66614, all weathered up.